morning and welcome to worship this morning at Grace Lower Stone Reformed Church on this Mother's Day, May the 10th, 2020. We want to wish all the mothers a very happy and blessed Mother's Day today. And let those who have ears to hear listen to the word of the Lord as he speaks to us today. His words are our fortress and strength providing us with shelter and foundation for daily living. Come, hear the words of the Lord. Let us sing our opening hymn that's found in your bulletin. I hope you all have that before you that was emailed to you. Jesus Christ is risen today. responsive call to worship. God is in our midst, forming us to be his own people. Though the way may be difficult, God, God will, will be, be with, with us. us. We need not fear. In the Lord, Lord we will take, take our, our refuge, refuge for our God, God is our, our strength. strength. Come to the Lord who will surround you with God's own righteousness. Lord, Lord open, open our, our hearts, hearts and our, our spirits, spirits so, so that, that we, we may faithfully, faithfully follow you. Make your hearts ready to receive the goodness of the Lord. We, we are, are ready, ready to step, step into service, service for God. God. Amen. Amen.
there's victory in Jesus, and we give thanks for that truth, and we give thanks that we have a previous recording of the choir to play for us here. No, the choir's not here. There's four of us here today, myself and Kevin, Brent Agner on the sound system, Becky's helping us sing. But we are worshiping together. We give thanks for that recording in the choir. And now we're ready for today's New Testament reading from the epistle of First Peter. I'd ask if you can get your Bible and uh, if you will turn to the letter, the first letter of uh, St. Peter that he wrote, the first Peter and the second chapter, beginning in the second verse, and hear God's holy word. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of God's holy word. And let us now join together in singing our next hymn, Come My Way, My Truth, and My Life.
And before we go to our gospel reading this morning, let's join our hearts and our minds together in a time of prayer. Let us bow in prayer. Father God, we come before you praising you. For you created the heavens and the earth and the sea, everything that's in them. All things are upheld by your word of power, and in Christ Jesus all things consist and hold together. We praise you and we thank you that you, almighty God, have sent your one and only Son to die on a cross for our sins, to give us the gift of eternal life, and because of that we can come boldly before your throne of grace this morning and at any time, and to cast our cares upon you and to praise you and to thank you for all the many blessings uh, you give us. Today, Lord, there are those whom we know that need your healing touch, those whom we love and we name silently in our hearts before you now. We ask that you would bring not only physical healing, but spiritual strength and comfort and sustenance to them. And we pray also for many who are fighting this coronavirus. We pray that you would give them health and we pray for those on the front lines who are bringing your healing uh, to them, the doctors and the nurses and the CNAs and others. Pray that you would protect them, put your protective hedge around them and, in, and encourage them because many of them are stressed out from all that they are doing to help others. We pray for them, we lift them up. We also lift up others on our front lines, the grocery store workers and clerks and stock boys, the truck drivers, everyone who is keeping the food going for us, Lord. We pray that you would watch over them, keep them safe and secure. Lord, we pray that you would stay the hand of this plague that's upon us. Help us to repent. May this be a time of turning many hearts to you in the name of Jesus Christ, that they might see that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and that they would seek you for eternal life, the free gift that you've given us, Lord. Help them to believe. Lord, we pray for those in leadership, our president, vice president, the others who are members of Congress, the leaders, uh, of our state government, the governor and the mayors, etc. Be with them, give them knowledge and wisdom and courage. And Lord, also at this time, we pray for an, an ending of hate and anger, which seem to be like an epidemic in themselves. There's too much anger, Lord, and, and hatred. Help us to be lights of your peace and grace in Jesus Christ who told us even to love our enemies. Help us, Lord, to walk in your ways through your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the church which continues to thrive even in this time of lockdown and stay-at-home orders. Strengthen her, O oh Lord, not only here but around the world, other places where she is under attack and persecution in the Mideast and in China. We thank you for those brothers and sisters who are a strong witness to their faith for us. Help us, Lord, to use this time which is so different as a time of growing in our personal relationship with you and Jesus Christ. We pray that you hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to, saying, Our Lord Father, Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you would find your Bibles, we're going to read from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, well-known passage beginning in the first verse hear God's holy word let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there you may be also. And where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's holy word. Let us bow in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Happy Mother's Day, all you mothers. This is a special day, and we're glad that we have a special day when we can recognize, give thanks, and praise our mothers. Mothers, caring nurturing, loving, who want us to have the peace and joy that they desire for us and for us not to worry. And it's like Jesus says here in this passage, let not your hearts be troubled. You can almost hear your mother speaking. Be uh, assured, it's okay, it's okay. And I want us to look at this passage today. It's well known, but I want us to see that there's a little different take on this passage today than many of us may have been brought up with to understand. Uh, first of all, the premise here is that we've got to believe in Jesus Christ. That's the first thing. Believe in God, he says. Believe also in me. It's an imperative. It's like a command. Because if you don't believe in Jesus Christ to begin with and trust in him and know that he tells the truth about who he is, everything that follows is for naught. So this is the first. This is the foundation. Believe Jesus Christ. Trust in him. And then secondly, we're going to look at it in his father's house. What does that mean? Thirdly, I go to prepare a place for you. Where is this place? What's all involved? And then about living in you, that you are a living temple yourselves. So let's look at this. Firstly, believe in me. That's the command for us. You know, 
Earlier in John, in chapter 6, people were coming to him and saying, uh, how can we work the works of God? We want to work the works of God, Jesus. And he turned to them and he said, here's the work of God. Believe in him whom he has sent, Jesus Christ, that I am the son of God. And so that's the work we are to do, to believe in him. Because if we don't believe full-heartedly in Jesus and who he says he is, we will not experience the joy and the abundant life that he has for us. So let's start there. We've got to start with believing in Jesus. So secondly, he says, in my father's house are many mansions. We know that one. There was an old song I've got a mansion just over the hilltop, a gospel song. Well, what's he talking about here? In my father's house are many mansions. And I think many of us have grown up and studied this and realized he's talking about heaven, isn't he? That in my father's house, where is the father dwelling? Father God is in heaven. When we die, we'll go get our mansion in heaven. But let me caution you a bit here. Before we get into heaven, let us realize that most people, when they heard Jesus say, in my father's house, would have thought of the temple. And didn't Jesus say, you have made my father's house a den of thieves? First of all, he's talking about the temple. The Jewish people believe that God dwelt in a particular way in the Holy of Holies, in the temple inside, and his presence was over the ark there. And so when Jesus referred to in my father's house, they would have thought, oh, the temple. And of course, there were different storage rooms around the outside of the temple. And the word used here for mansions It's not like we would think of a huge antebellum mansion that we see. It's the word for a dwelling, a room, mone in Greek. So uh, there are many dwelling places in the Father's temple. And he goes ahead and explains that in that he wants us to know that your soul, your heart is to be the dwelling place of God. This was entirely new to the people. They knew that there certain men in, in the Old Testament had been poured out the Holy Spirit upon them. Uh, different people had been leaders in that way. But to think that God the Father and his only Son would come and dwell in you, that you would have a dwelling place for God in your heart was totally new, that you would be The temple, this is what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that your body is the temple of God? And listen uh, to to what Jesus promised in uh, John 14, a little further on in verse 23, when he says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And listen, and we will come to him and make our home with him. And that's the same word used earlier, dwelling, home, that will dwell with him. What a promise. Don't miss out on this promise. So before we get to thinking about heaven where God is, think about how you are to be a dwelling place for the Father and the Son as you believe in Jesus Christ. And then secondly, we enter into the same difficulty here. When Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also, and the way you know. So he's going to prepare a place for you. And again, where do we usually think of? Well, we think of heaven. He's going to go to heaven to prepare a place for us. Well, yes, eventually, uh, when we die, our soul will leave to be with Christ. To be absent from the body is to be present with Christ, the soul. But let's look at the context of this reading first. 
Where does all this take place when Jesus is talking about this in the 14th chapter of John? He's in the upper room before the day when he's crucified, isn't he? They've had the Last Supper. They're sitting around the table here. And he's talking to them. They don't really understand that he's going to go to the cross and suffer and die the very next day. But this is what he's saying. He's saying, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. He means he's going to the cross. He's going to the cross to die and suffer and shed his blood that our sins may be forgiven and thus open the way that the Father and he can live in us. And you remember when Jesus was on the cross and he uttered his last words and he gave up the spirit, something happened simultaneously in his father's house, the temple, Do you remember what happened in the temple? The veil of the temple or the curtain was rent in two. It was torn. That is the veil and the curtain that was outside of the Holy of Holies where the ark and the presence of God were. So his death on the cross opened the way for all of us to live with God and he with us in our hearts believing. And also notice he didn't say, you need to prepare a place, get yourselves fixed up so that God can, you can be worthy enough for God to live in you. No, he prepared the place. It's all of grace. Like the name of this church, Grace, Lower Stone Reformed Church. It is a gift of God, lest anyone boast. So Jesus said, I'm going to go to prepare a place for you that where I am you may be also. So he opened the way to the Father and now we are a dwelling place for God both the Father and the Son through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he said, and I will come again. And didn't he resurrect from the dead? He came back to his disciples. And in Gospel of John it says he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then later at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And it is through the Holy Spirit that God the Father and Son dwell in you. Don't you know that your bodies are the temple of God? He said, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you through the Holy Spirit. So maybe this gives us a little different understanding of about a mansion in the father's house we're going to be a dwelling place of god through what jesus has done his preparation on the cross the blood of christ cleanses you from all sin and prepares a way for god to dwell in us so fourthly then god lives in you and if we love christ we will keep his commandments and his word as a way to say thank you. If you love Jesus, you will keep his commandments. And the only way we can do it is to have that personal relationship and moment by moment dialogue with Christ in you. Because Jesus said a little later in John, apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. So Christ lives in you that you can live a life of glorifying him, keeping his commandments, showing his love. Maybe you need to work on your anger. Uh, I saw a quote this week from Dallas Willard that anger is the fundamental problem of human beings. Anger, or, or maybe it's lust or maybe it's covetousness, whatever it is, go to Christ in you now. Help me, Jesus Christ, with this. He is there to help you. And it's moment by moment to do this. Not easy. No one said the Christian life is easy, but it's gracious. And greater is he that's in you 
than he that's in the world. You see this constant reiterating that God is in you. Christ is in you like a branch in the vine. You cannot be separated from Christ. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Jesus Christ because of what he's done on the cross. He's opened the way and now you can live a life pleasing to him. He didn't come to live in you because you got your act cleaned up first. No. But because he lives in you now, you can live a life of thanksgiving to him. And it takes some work. We've got to work out our salvation, knowing that God is in you to do his good will. G.K. Chesterton once said, it's not that Christianity has been tried and found wanting. It's that Christianity has been found hard and not been tried because we think we've got to do it on our own. No, receive Christ Jesus and go to him moment by moment. We need Christ in our lives and we need to have him in there every day and talk to him and walk with him like the old hymn says. But I want to tell you something else that we need and that is the church. And I'm going to say something that might uh, you might disagree with, you might be alarmed, but I'm going to quote a church father, Cyprian, who said, if you want to have God as your father, you've got to have the church as your mother. And people will say, well, that sounds very Roman Catholic, doesn't it? Well, let me quote to you from John Calvin, who is the founding father of our reformed version of the faith, and he said this, there is no other way to enter life unless this mother conceive us in her womb, give us birth, and nourish us at her breast with the pure milk of the gospel and the sacraments. Away from her bosom, we cannot hope for any forgiveness of sins or any salvation. We need the church. She is our mother. We cannot graduate from her until death when we go to heaven. So this Mother's Day, to sum up, let's give thanks that God has opened the way that he can dwell in us through Christ's death on the cross and that you are a temple of God and that you are living stones of a temple and that the church is the building where we come together and where we find encouragement. Like it says in Hebrews, encourage one another. Don't fail to gather together. Well, that's hard, isn't it, right now? But through such things as, as this and YouTube and other things and Zoom, whatever, and through phones, we can gather together to encourage one another, again, Hebrews, to love and good works because we need the church as a mother of encouragement and strengthening us. The church is the pillar and foundation of the truth truth is God loves you and Jesus loves you and gave himself for you. So this Mother's Day, let us live the truth. Christ is in you, encouraging one another to the glory of God. Let us bow in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the truth that you have sent your son to die on a cross for us that you might come and dwell in our hearts by faith. We thank you for the church that encourages us and nourishes us by the pure milk of this gospel. Help us to live that truth in our lives in these challenging times that we might give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name, amen. And now let us sing our closing hymn, Jesus Shall Reign. Yeah.
grace of our love, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Thank you.